All right. Hello, everyone out there on our social media outlets. Bozo Nika Nins. My name is Charlie Perry. I am Prairie Band Potawatomi of Mayetta, Kansas. Also Salish Kootenai of Flathead, Montana, United States. And I am the Assistant Director of Vision Maker Media. And I will be moderating this wonderful forum today. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to Vision Maker Media's first online indigenous film festival. Vision Maker Media, if you don't know already, is the Native American nonprofit located in Lincoln, Nebraska right smack dab in the middle of the United States. Vision Maker Media aims to empower and engage Native people to share stories. Uh, we envision a world changed and healed by understanding Native stories and public conversations they generate. Reaching the general public and the global market is the ultimate goal for the dissemination of Native produced media that shares Native perspectives with the world. Vision Maker Media continues to showcase the most compelling Native stories for public broadcasting on local PBS stations and worldwide online. Major festival sponsors include the Lincoln Journal Star, the Woodland Voices Flutes, the Lux Center for the Arts, Native American Calling, National Native News, INDIGEFI, NV1, FNX First Nations Experience, NET Nebraska's PBS and NPR stations, Woods Charitable Fund, Humanities, Nebraska, the Lincoln Community Foundation, Lincoln Arts Council, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Cooper Foundation, the Rees Foundation, and the Cherokee Nation Film Office and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And of course, our lovely and amazing donors out there, just like you who's watching. So today we'll be talking about We'll be talking a little bit about two wonderful films that are in our, um, our LGBTQ uh, plus lineup, Nancy from now on, and Sweetheart Dancers. And today we have a few of uh, the uh, participants in those two films with us. And I think we will just get it started uh, with, Keely, <clears throat> with Keely Meachin. Uh, Keely is an emerging writer and director from Atoriora, New Zealand. She won the Creative New Zealand Emerging Talent Award at the New Zealand International Film Festival and the Audience Choice Awards at Toronto's Imaginative Film Festival for her de debut short film, Nancy From Now On. In both awards, she was commended for her use of common societal issues in Agatoria to tell a relatable and compelling story. She plans to continue this pattern and use films to comment on aspects of Altoria that are often left out of the mainstream spotlight. Keely, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and why did you choose to put this film together? Um, well, kia ora, hello, thank you for having us. You pretty much already told them all about me. Um, from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, I wanted to write this film to kind of showcase Indigenous people in a different light. I feel like uh, in our country, in the media, Māori and Pacifica, men aren't really portrayed as like soft and warm and loving, which is not the case. So I wanted to make a film that kind of like puts that perspective on the screen. Yeah. Wonderful, and you definitely did just that. If those of you are watching who haven't seen it yet, be sure to check, check out Nancy from now on. It is an awesome film, and I'll give it two native thumbs up. Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, introducing uh, Bailey uh, Poaching, who is the star of Nancy from now on. Bailey is an actor and filmmaker of Nagare Watuu, and, Samo and Samoan descent. Poaching's first short film, Cosmic Adventures, was selected for the Waronia Moroni Film Festival, as well as the Morori Land Film Festival. Bailey also starred in Keely Meachin's uh, Nancy From Now On, which saw success at Imagine Native and the New Zealand International Film Festival. Bailey is currently working on his next project through the Morori Land Productions Naga Pakaka Incubator Program. 
Hey, Bailey, how you doing today? Hello, to Charlie. Thank you for having us. I'm good. I'm well, thank you. Oh, well, wonderful. Well, can you tell me a little bit about uh, uh, why you decided to get involved and Nancy from now on and how you and uh, Keely came to be acquainted? Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, kia ora, everybody. Thank you for having us. Um, uh, yeah, so the, the film kind of came about me and Keely were at film school together. Um, and I was actually studying directing with her. We were classmates. And it reached a point where we were re making our big final projects. And Keely was looking for a, um, a Maori actor to play her character. And it was getting um, a bit desperate because there's an acting school attached to our film school. And <laughs> we were a bit... Um, lacking in the indigenous department in, in, in the cast that we had available. So we were holding auditions and I remember helping her with an audition for someone else or, or helping her prep for the auditions. And I just said, hey, I'll read for it. I can, I can do a read and I can, you know, just say you've auditioned one other person. And I auditioned and then Keely, a few hours later, told me that <laughs> just because of how hard it had already been to find someone, it was, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll go with you. And then we were shooting. No, that's not how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> we all started crying in the audition and Bailey nailed it. <laughs> and got the part. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, yes, well, that's wonderful. how we got to be involved with it, yeah. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, a lot of times in this business, for all you out there who want to get a little behind the scenes look, that's how it goes. You know, we... Uh, want to do we will have the same passions and we want to make the world a bit better of a place and sometimes you get awesome content just like this and i thank you for sharing that personal story with me bailey and um we'll get back to you guys here in just a minute but i'd like to introduce real quick ben alex dupree um who is who did the wonderful film sweetheart dancers so a quick little tidbit about ben He's an enrolled member of the Colville Confederated Tribes in Washington State, where he grew up. He is a current artist in residence at Concordia Studio, headed by Davis Guggenheim. He is, he is also an impact producer fellow for Firelight Media in the creative house of Stanley Nelson and Marcia Smith. He is an incoming instructor for a course in Indigenous method, met, Mythology in film and television at Duke University, Blue Devils uh, Center for Documentary Studies in the fall of 2019. Over the years, he has worked in commercial entertainment, tribal language preservation, and most recently by documenting the front lines of the Standing Rock occupation for five months. His directorial debut, Sweetheart Dancers, premiered at Big Sky Film Festival in 2019 he also produced Paulette, which follows gubernatorial national candidate Paulette Jordan by Heather Ray for the Guardian Films and Sundance Institute. He is formerly a 2017 Sundance Institute uh, Rauschenberg Producers Fellows and a 2016 Radford Center grantee. Welcome, Ben. How are you doing today? Hey, how's it going? Hey. Um, yeah, thank you for that introduction. I, um, yeah, some of that stuff has shifted over time here. Of course, I've um, aged out of the Concordia Artists in Residence. I'm now an alumni of those affiliates and, and still, you know, pretty passionate about these new projects coming out. Uh, Paulette uh, should be coming out soon here with Women Make Movies out of New York, which is uh, Paulette Jordan's currently a Coeur d'Alene tribal member in Washington running for Sora and Idaho running for senator right now so that's that's pretty exciting to see all these indigenous people uh, working hard to try to change the narrative uh, within uh, you know the uh, the government races here so yeah thank you yeah no problem so ben tell me a little bit about what made you decide to get uh you know what gave you the idea for sweetheart dancers and why'd you decide to make it into a film well, you know, we were, um, I was at, uh, up at Sundance at Fet Film Festival and I, I met a really great photographer named Ceylon Grey Mountain. And um, he, you know, we got along pretty good. He, and he said he was, um, he's a Ute, Ute tribal member. And he said uh, he had, a, he, his cousin uh, had been eliminated from the dance competition and 
they suspected it was because um, they were a gay couple trying to enter a, a contest called the Sweetheart Dance, which was um, up until that point, you know, primarily for men and women. And the discussion really hadn't been talked about. And, and it was just one of those uh, strange moments in Indian country where, you know, it, it could have just been swept under the rug. And, and you know, we, we didn't go into it uh, thinking that it was something that we wanted to make anyone feel bad about. I think it was more about, uh, here's an opportunity to educate, you know, the next generation of people coming forward that we're still dealing with our own historic trauma as people, you know, we, we came up in boarding schools and Catholic schools and there's a lot of shame and guilt around that. And, uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, at least five of my cousins, my first cousins are you know, identifies two spirit. And, and so though I'm kind of like the funny uncle, I felt like, you know, I could do, I could do this story with them and uh, they're collaborators with me. And it wasn't, wasn't me going in and wanting to imprint my, my own ideas on their story. It was, I, I wanted to share their story for them. And, uh, and Sean and Adrian are an incredible couple. They still uh, continue to to be advocates and and work really hard to to change the narrative about uh, Indigenous Two Spirit people taking their rightful place on the dance floor where, where they've always belonged long before America was America. Wonderful, you know they're they seem like an incredible couple that's absolutely in love. And hey, there's some pretty good dancers too. Yeah, they, 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 they keep getting better too. They get better outfits and keep, uh, you know, traveling around. And, and so, yeah, that, um, yeah, they're, they're just continuing to emerge. And, and though this, the film was a short, you know, we, we, we did what we could with what we had, the resources we had. And, um, you know, it turned out to be, it was about a 13 minute film. Uh, but, but the emotional impact of that film has resonated around the world. It's, you know, we've screened everywhere from, you know, AFI Docs, uh, you know, Aspen Short Fest and, uh, you know, Mountain Film. So it's been really well received, Traverse City Film Fest. Uh, we've, been all, we've been all over the world with this film. And it, though it's a short film, it really just, um, you know, encapsulates a, a new movement of, of future leaders. You know, I think that's what it's really about is how do we become the leaders that our ancestors wanted us to be? long before this, uh, you know, this debacle <laughs> called America. Um, oh, yeah, I hear you on that. And, you know, kind of kind of uh, to segue off of, you know, worldwide impact, you know, we, we hop a few thousand miles over to New Zealand, you know, and we have Keely and Bailey doing their work. Um, Keely, would you like to start? And then Bailey, maybe you chime in on, what has the reception been like out there for Nancy from now on? And, you know, especially indigenous communities around New Zealand, uh, have people learned from this and gotten better and more accepting, you know, after watching this film? I mean, I hope so. Um, the reception was pretty good. Um, we weren't expecting to get into our like major film festival with you know, an indigenous film made by film students. So I, that kind of made me feel like, it was selected by Jane Campion as well, who's like, I mean, one of our top film directors. And um, that kind of felt like maybe our industry was trying to push for change. It felt like a very positive, like, how do I word it? Maybe like they weren't, they're trying to be more inclusive this year. Maybe that's like a stepping stone. The next year and the year to come, maybe we'll see more indigenous, maybe more we'll see more like queer festival films and big mainstream festivals. Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as, as you do with, when you tell stories like this, you kind of hope to in some incremental way implement like a change or, or change some person's mind about how they feel about indigenous people and and topi and i think there's something in that like um the the uniquely indigenous perspective of the queer identity in terms of you know we have a word takatapui in Samoan we have the fafafine and, and um over on turtle island you guys have the two-spirit like this idea that sexual and gender fluidity and identity transcends and predates western ideas of you know um 
gender roles and sexuality and all of that. I think there's something to be said in our, our indigenous perspective about, yeah, this has always been a thing. This is, uh, this is a thing that existed before you guys came here and this is, we, we need to tell you guys. I see we have new friends. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And on that note, we were just joined by the stars of Sweetheart Dancers, Adrian Snyder and uh, Sean Stevens. Welcome, guys. How you doing today? Up oh, they're getting in. Well, we'll give them just another second to get in here real quick. And yeah, I totally I totally get that, Bailey. Like you said, you know, the, the, these lives that we all live have been going on since, you know, the beginning of time. And really, unfortunately, sometimes it just takes people a little bit longer to, to catch on than others. Yeah. You know, we fixed we, it. Yep. Oh, I'm so there sorry. they are. <laughs> How's it going, Hi, everyone. Hi. We're really great to, we're, we're, I know we're late. I'm so sorry. We're in a spotty area, but we're really glad to be a part of this and, and share what we can and a little bit of our perspective on what we do and what we stand for as two-spirit people. And I'm glad you guys, I, I'm so sorry to jump in to the middle of your conversation, but I'm thankful to be a part of this and we're glad to be here. Oh, no, you, a Adrian and Sean, we're happy to have <laughs> you. I mean, again, these are the stars of Sweetheart Dancers. You know, we have a we have a whole star filled we got a star quilt going on here today um because we have the stars of uh nancy uh, from now on as well all the way from new zealand guys so um i guess i'll ask you a question real quick uh what was it like being on center stage um you know and having your story told through sweetheart dancers um for for us when we really took the point of making our project public and our story public i mean media got a hold of our our story and things that had happened to us with the disqualification but what it really brought to us was being able to give everybody a voice for our community it created visibility for our two-spirit people um we don't have that and we always talk about that very in a lot of conversations that we never had those role models and so we want to create that for our community because there's a whole generation that was lost due to sickness and you know alcoholism and substance abuse there's yeah. a whole generation of and so to have our story told in such a large way like this and for it to reach as many people that it has reached um i think it's reached kids everywhere at this point it's reached two-spirit kids everywhere and that's really important for us is that imagery reaching our youth and showing them that there's life after that it gets better and you can do it you can make it all right wonderful guys and and i think that's so important and i believe um you know keely and bailey would agree with you too that right now you know finding your identity especially as a young person mm -hmm. and you know just going with it you know there's so much in society that can hold us back from being who we truly are and you know for everybody involved today it's just such a blessing to see that you guys are like, nope, we're not going to put up with it anymore. We're going to go out there and this is who we are. Exactly. And it has to, and it literally has to be done. And it's, it's somebody's going to have to be that voice. And we are glad to do that because it's, it doesn't always come easy. And, you know, the, the messages behind the scenes aren't always as open and respectful and polite <laughs> but you know i know we're creating that space and we've even just created the discussion within our own native communities of what is two-spirit and how is it present today and and how does this fit into my community as well how does this fit with my tribe's identity how do i fit into my community as a two-spirit person and what can i do um to be you know to be a more active member and to put myself out there within yep. my own space, you know? It's, it's not about, you know, creating that visibility nationwide or not everyone has to do that, but it's about creating that comfortability so that people can go out to their own communities and, you know, have their own voices and speak up and create those spaces for the next. Wonderful, I mean, <laughs> you guys hit the nail on the head, professional, couple professionals <laughs> over right here. <laughs> doing, doing my job better than me. Well, well, everybody, we're going to go to the board real quick. 
Uh, okay. We have a couple questions from our audience members. And uh, this first one, I believe, will be for Keely and Bailey. Feel free to chime in. How can American film festivals learn from the New Zealand film festival and how they support their filmmaker? Does the New Zealand film festivals really tour around to the major islands of New Zealand and give a portion of the profits to the filmmakers? Um, <clears throat> Well, we've only got two islands, um, or two major ones. Um, I'm not really sure how to answer that. They were very supportive in terms of it's kind of run by, hmm, I don't really know. They were very supportive in terms that they looked at us like young people. They shipped us around. We went down to um, Wellington, which is at the, the capital of the country. And they uh, showed our film pretty much in all the major cities and really helped us like broadcast it. Um, they were supportive in terms of, they gave us prize money. We didn't really make any of the profits from the festival, but it's not about making money. It's about, you know, showing people your film. Yep, and uh, well, Josh, I think, you know, if there was a check, it might've got lost in the mail. Um, so I think Keely and Bailey will be looking out for that if there is, but it looks like, like Keely said, you know, really at the end of the day, it's about, you know, sharing a story that will hopefully touch someone's life. And I think that's definitely what they did and Nancy from now on, you know, and, uh, okay. So we got another question here. Um, I am not LGBTQ, but my daughter is the part of sweetheart dancers where the announcer says only male and female couples and the boys turn around, reminding me of all the times I was told on my reservation school that I couldn't have the same educational resources as the white teacher's children. We are often told laws and policies weren't met for us, which makes it so much more painful when we tell our own people something that is not made for them. Well, that looks like more of a comment um, but fellas, uh, what do you think, you know, like, ha has there been an instance where someone's tried to drag you down, but you said, heck no with that, we're doing our thing and we're going to keep on, keep it on. I would say that's the entire message of sweethearts and us just continuing to persevere and push forward and attempt to create a change, create conversation and put ourselves back out there. That, that was our moment for sure. And that's the message for our movie. Definitely. Yeah, I think I think us just like I said, creating that visibility and having those conversations. I mean, when you're when there's a picture or something visual in front of you, you can really create a conversation around it. And for a lot of native two spirit people, that conversation was never started. So I'm glad that our film was the start for so many. And as and a native, non-native, oh, yeah. it, it raised so many questions for so many people. And I think that, that was the goal was and, to- And I think it really made people reflect on just how they treat others. I mean, the rules were so simple, but it, it really didn't, you didn't realize that it was gonna disqualify us and the way it was gonna disqualify right. us and how it was gonna feel for us to, to go through that. And um, and I'm glad we captured that on film, honestly. I, I'm very grateful to, to yeah, ben, ben for capturing that and uh, putting together everything. Yep. Yeah, and that was a powerful moment too, which personally I thought was just freaking dumb. You know, they should have let you guys go out there and dance regardless. But but anyway, I digress. Um, Thank you. Ben, Thank you. Speaking, speaking of powerful moments in the film, Ben, you know, you, you were the man behind the camera, press and record. Was there any specific times that you were out there running and gunning, getting footage where you just felt a powerful connection to what was going on and, you know, any moments that stood out to you? Yeah, we, we actually had some great camera people. Uh, DP Shandi Tome was a Diné filmmaker who, uh, and Alex Getz, uh, a friend of mine from Cleveland who's Nat Geo photographer. And, and then I picked up the camera now and then, and then our, 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 well, um, our, our family friend, Ceylon Gray, you know, he, he had the camera, so he was shooting too. Um, but the moment that I really thought was, you know, when Ceylon and I 
went with them to the powwow and there was signs all over that said, you know, you couldn't record. And we were, we were a little freaked out. We were like, you know, we might get drug out of here. <laughs> so the boys went and got dressed, um, you know, out in the parking lot and we followed them in. And, you know, I, that was a moment where I was, I was holding the camera following them. I wasn't really sure what the reaction would be because we knew, we knew that at that point, um, they knew we were there and we knew we had the cameras and, and we were being as respectful as we could. But my goal was just to continue to follow them on in in that arena. And, uh, you know, you have a little bit of a fear there, you know, if, if, if um, is there going to be security? Are they going to try to kick you out or whatever? Um, you know, so you have all those fears because, you know, you never know. You never really know what people think you're up to. And a camera is a dangerous weapon. Uh, uh, stories are stories can change the world and, and as we see with our storytellers here and, and our amazing heart you know it's, it's just I just have so much respect and love like I'm also a big fan of, of not only just you know what Sean and Adrian represent but you know what I knew this was going to last for a long time I knew it was going to just grow and snowball and get bigger for them and for the movement and the communities that are telling their stories and um, so so you know you do the work like it's an action you, you go into these moments and you, you just want to you want to shoot something real and, and beautiful and dramatic and that's what indigenous film should be it should be an action it should be something that changes people's hearts and minds and um with sean and adrian i had the the perfect uh the perfect characters you know but it's not a character it's a, a subject right because they are um they are just as real and powerful and intelligent and and uh, loving as they as they are in that story that's that is who they are and um, that that's a it's, it's hard for that not to shine through in this piece. Wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, to uh, segue back to uh, Kylie and Bailey, you know, was there a powerful moment when y'all were on set and you just took a step back and you were like, you know, this is important, you know, and or just had that emotional feeling where you really, that you really realized that you were doing something important for everybody? Uh, ben, you want to answer this one? Um, I think, I think what, like what Keely said before, there's like a, a certain tenderness and a softness to Pacifica and Maori men, but also I find indigenous men in general that isn't, isn't portrayed on screen. Um, and I think that was one of the coolest things to explore about our film. So there's a scene where <clears throat> I'm with my father, uh, played by Tomoro Emil, um, it's, it's just after I've done my drag show and it's a very intimate scene, just talking about what they haven't talked about, talking about how hard it is for certain generations of indigenous men to, to communicate and just talking about how sorry they are for not talking. And it's just one of those simple, uh, human moments that I think kind of encapsulated what the film was about and, and what, what makes it so special to me. It was just so tender. I don't know about you, Keeks. Well, yeah, that, so that scene is, well, the whole film for me was about, well, my father has two well, queer sons, and once, when my brother was always very quiet, and once my father just said to me, I really wish that we could just, he would just tell me that he's gay, so that we can talk about it, and that he can bring boys over, and we can be happy about it. But my dad was, like, too embarrassed to ask my brother just to talk about it and so that kind of like had a ding in my head and that's kind of why I made the film and so when we did that scene Bailey's right that was kind of like the crux of the film though it's a very awkward scene because Kiwi men are very bad at emotions and talking but we're getting better and so that film was kind of like the heart the it gets your heart well for me it does funny as well like there's a bit of improv in there just in terms of you know <laughs> two men not knowing how to talk about their feelings having to talk about their feelings so it's, it's poignant i guess is the word. well i think we're the same way here in the states too y'all you know as indigenous peoples you know indigenous men we can have you know i know at least speaking for me and my family we can you know, go go weeks without sharing any of our feelings with each other. And, you know, like you said, it's not going to happen in a day, but we just keep taking these small steps and eventually, you know, the world changes for the better. And 
I really feel like that's what, you know, you're doing with Nancy from now on. And that's what Sweetheart Dancers has done is really just educate through entertainment, through, you know, good laughs and sharing good stories in a real good way. And um, I guess my next question is, is, uh, you know, I'll switch back to Adrian and Sean real quick. You know, as young people come up, Adrian and Sean, you know, who are going through similar experiences with you, you know, maybe they're not struggling with their, you know, their <clears throat> sexual identity, but they may be struggling with who they want to be in life or, you know, insert, you know, any kind of struggle there. Is there any kind of advice that you would give the young people coming up right now that are, you know, trying to overcome adversity and obstacles? Oh, thank you. That's, I just want to thank you for that question because it, it'll, it touches me very personally, but I am, I'm, as, as for you, be true to who you are and how you feel. Have an outlet, have, find your support. We, we are, we support you as a youth in discovering your, your identity, where you fit, how comfortable you feel. And not everybody is going to be receptive to how you are as an individual, but guess what? That's what makes you, you. And stay true to that. And it's tough. It is very tough out there at times. It is very tough, but for your youth and all of, not just native youth, all you find your support. You know, sometimes it may not come from where you expect it to be, but it is still out there and you are not alone. You are just not alone. Sorry, I was on mute. You know, that's wonderful. And that's just, uh, you know, touches my heart as well. And, you know, like, um, Ben, what do you think? Do you have any advice for young people coming up who, uh, maybe struggling with obstacles and adversity, you know, is there anything you might have had to overcome before or are continuing to overcome even as a little bit older of a gentleman that you could uh, speak to? Hey, 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 calm <laughs> down with the older, I'm not an elder yet. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, being Indian is one of the hardest things in the world for us to be. To be indigenous is to take on the responsibility of thousands of years in an occupied territory on an empirical regime, you know, coming from a perspective where millions and millions of people of our relatives and ancestors died of pandemics long before this pandemic even showed up, you know, so, so we came from a disadvantage a long time ago. Um, and so, you know, we're just at the intersection of rebuilding uh, what we were and what we once, you know, one, once, what we once had. And so when I look at uh, the youth and I look at these younger generations, you know, I, I want to support them in ways that I didn't have for myself. Like no, nobody was really there to teach me how to use a camera when I was a kid. Nobody, I didn't have TV shows to know what it was that I really wanted to be into. Like I didn't, ha I had to teach myself all this, all the while being told, well, you know, being an artist isn't a viable way to make a living. Or, uh, you know, what you do is just kind of a, it's a fantasy. It's not, it won't ever mean very much, you know. Um, and, and, you know, it's just lucky that, like, social media and media became a real thing. And now it's, um, it is something that I can take care of my family with. It is something I can dream about again. But, you know, you, t you ask every one of these little kids on the res whether, you know, you know, 20 years ago, did they think that they could be a filmmaker? Do you think that they could tell a great story? Do you think they um, could be accepted and loved somewhere? You know, that those are all hard questions to answer before the internet. And so, you know, I think we're all struggling to try to overcome generations of trauma. Uh, though we may not hold it in our hearts very deeply, like we feel it and we see it. Um, you know, so, so that's, when I channeled, you know, my energy to try to relate to what Sean and Adrian had gone through, I thought about the times in my life where my own people told me I wasn't good enough to do what I wanted to do. My own people told me that I couldn't be a part of something. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of that pain that you carry with you and it makes you angry, makes you want to do things you shouldn't do, makes you want to be, uh, 
the person that you weren't meant to be. So I hopefully, you know, these stories that come through and we're telling are an example of, of a way for us to be able to succeed and to, to build something strong within yourself. One of the most powerful moments that Sean and Adrian said really didn't make the movie, but it wasn't because it wasn't the most powerful moment. And they said, you know, we were around the campfire and, you know, we were talking about what, what's the reason behind all this? And, and um, you know, Adrian says, well, if, if I can keep one two-spirit youth from committing suicide, you know, if they can see what we had to go through and, and realize that they can still make it, they can still be something, um, make something of themselves, then that's, the work is done. And, and so that level of just sophisticated strength and standing together and their love, you know, they've been together for a long time. This is not, this is a long-term couple that, you know, ha has a plan to continue growing as a, as a family. And uh, we need those examples. We need those examples in our communities to show that it, you can have a life that you're respected, you're loved, you're treated well, and, and don't put up with any baloney, man. You, you can make it, you know, you can get through this. And so to me, that's, that's, that's the ultimate goal of filmmaking is that we're trying to change the narrative overall. And I'm just really blessed to have this as my first, first short film, you know, and, and to have that. And, and also hats off to you and just bringing about all of these indigenous communities from all over the world who can come together and share our stories and, and realize that we have more in common than we, than we don't, you know? So, so yeah, that was, that was my, my uncle ran, uncle ran's off. Well, hey, Ben, you're just like Doc Holliday and Tombstone. I'm in my prime. <laughs> and I want to thank you for sharing that with me because I do think that resonates, you know, with a lot of not just indigenous peoples, but, you know, all communities. You know, it's we all go through a lot of different things and changes and trials and tribulations, ups and downs. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just getting better every day. And to that note, um, Keely, would you like to add anything? Um, I think Ben kind of nailed that perfectly. We we have very similar issues in New Zealand, you know, around uh, colonization and indigenous trauma. We have a word for it called whakama, which kind of means like your inherent shame around your colonization, and you don't you don't really feel it like on the top level, but it's always like deep inside of you. And I kind of think. It's not our responsibility, but it's something that I want to like bring to the mainstream to show, you know, white people, Europeans, help them to understand like the, all the trauma that indigenous people have gone through because they don't think they fully will understand it without someone putting it right in their face, you know. But I do feel like it's a very positive time right now. It feels, I mean, there's some very bad things happening in the world, but young people are only getting more and more progressive and more understanding. So that feels like there is change coming and maybe we're in the middle of that right now. Yeah, we have an old Potawatomi story that says, you know, the seventh generation will change the world. And, and I truly believe that we're in that right now. And, and, you know, Bailey, I know you got a lot of strength in your heart. Do you have any, uh, anything to add to that conversation? Um, <laughs> it's kind of following on to two great kind of thoughts there with Ben and Keely's, but I think um, the important thing for me is, and I think Ben touched on this with Indigenous Two Spirit youth, is that our kind of inability to talk about these things or express ourselves or kind of celebrate our identity lead to the worst results, like it, and oftentimes, and it's and it's actually killing our youth, like. Um, my my demographic specifically pacific and maori men young men and their inability to talk about their struggles be it financial identity be it um being un unable to provide for our families as we're raised to to think or, or whatever it is it's, it's it's killing our young men and so i mean the the way we change that as storytellers is to show stories about people who can talk about themselves and who can express themselves openly and freely um i think the thing that i love about both of these stories is that the protagonist is never their own barrier, either be it my character or be it Adrian and Sean, like, like they never stop themselves. It's always other people telling them what they can't do. But the, the innate thing is that 
we always persevere. It's, it's not our problem. It's other people's problem that we're suffering. And so to have, um, again, not only indigenous, but indigenous um, queer identities presenting those stories about perseverance and just getting through and celebrating who we are, that's, that's, that's where we want to be getting. I think I kind of just ran it there a bit, but that's, that's, that's what means a lot to me about this. Hey, you touched my heart on that one, Bailey, so good, good communication, my friend. <laughs> And, you know, um, and I just want to thank everybody for coming on today because, you know, you are doing important work, you know, and it starts with what you're doing out there today. And that goes with everybody watching online right now. You know, the world changes with what we all do together and we all have our small part to play. And, you know, everybody's doing that in here for sure. So just keep on doing it. And, um, you know, speaking of keep on doing it, you know, I guess we'll go back to Adrian and Sean. Uh, what do you guys got planned for the future? You know, let us in. I mean, I know we've got COVID going on, but any big oh, plans? Yeah. Oh, we, okay. So here first, you guys, we are going to be participating in a couple network television shows here in the very near future. Um, that's the most I can say on that. Um, stay tuned. It's going to be very, very exciting. Um, the amount of visibility we're bringing for Two-Spirit people right now, and just gay identity, period, as a, my, coming from minority, a minority group, to be able to be public again. And now, you know, Sweethearts, we did that two years ago, and there's been so much development and growth and so much change that we've initiated. And so now to take it to network television and to put it on a different platform, and for my own cousins and my own two-spirit relations saying, hey, that's my representation on TV. We all know that feeling and we all know how important it is to us when you come from culture, when you come from rituals, you come from respect, you come from all of those teachings. So it's, it's, you're, you're, you're marginalized. And so to put this out there, just be excited, stay tuned, Sean and I have it's we're really excited this is going to be happening very very shortly and so i that's that's what's next <laughs> well i know we're all going to be looking forward to that and adrian and sean you know i know i could speak for all of us at vision maker media when i say that you deserve all the blessings that are coming to you from creator and just keep it up you know keep on trucking because you're out here changing the world guys oh thank you guys thank you thank you everybody for putting this together we are I know we were late, but I'm so glad because this is, this is messages that need to be told. And then right now, like we've talked about, pandemic is such a perfect time. Look at how we're all together, but we're all spread throughout the United States and wherever, worldwide. And it's, it's important to have that out there. So thank you. Yeah, new day is gone for sure, you know, and, you know, looking into that horizon, Ben, any big plans coming up for you in the future? Oh man, it's really hard when, when the first short film you did was as successful as Sweethearts, you know? Everything's a bit of a, a gamble after that. They're just the, the perfect uh, protagonists, you know? Um, I, I, did, I did have an American Masters short coming out about Monkey Echo Hawk called The Resistance. And um, it's the, you know, I, I haven't officially been able to uh, confirm it, but I think it might be the first, um, Indigenous painter on American Masters PBS. Uh, they they did feature uh, a few Indigenous people in the past, but not painters. So that's coming up soon next month. Um, and then of course the Paulette piece we talked about as Paulette Jordan runs for Senator of Idaho. That piece should be coming out at some point here. Uh, and then of course you know I, I do have a relationship with Vision Maker here. Uh, one of my best friends, Chad Charlie. Um, I shot a piece called Firecracker Bullets with him that we're still trying to finish, and so I'm producing that for him. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, they, you know, these are all short projects, and I, I tend to work with new filmmakers, young filmmakers. Uh, our friend we mentioned before, Adrian's cousin, Salem Gray, I have a project with him about uh, some hip hop photography. He's a, he's an incredible photographer, and um, you know, we're just I just I like working with new artists. I like working with new directors or producers. 
I feel like that's where the energy is and I just want to amplify their voices as well. Um, and so I, I just continue to, to find, you know, comfortable space collaborating with new people and, and, and giving back to our communities and just continuing to try to uh, advocate. It was after we left Standing Rock, uh, we, you know, I spent so much, so many months on the ground watching all these other non-native filmmaker teams get fully funded and get support and were able to do a lot with their work where we were one of the only indigenous teams on the ground and we kind of made a pact and a commitment that we said, you know, from now on, you know, let's, let's try our best to uplift each other and, and, and rewrite the rules of how we create content, how do we produce things and how we all kind of, um, you know, share, share the spotlight in terms of creating new art. And uh, I, I'm happy to say that, you know, three, four years into it, you know, it, it's continuing to be that way. And so I'm kind of living it, um, in, a, in a happy place, you know, that I can continue to have my own way of approaching the industry and, and the successful collaborations with people, which all begin with Sean and Adrian. And that's wonderful, uh, Ben. And Chad Charlie is one of our 2020-21 Shorts Film Fellows this year. Uh, we've uh, launched our first ever Shorts program and, you know, we're proud to have you helping him out. I didn't even know that. And, you know, I'm the assistant director of the whole place. So, you know, that was awesome for me to hear. So thank you for uh, helping out Chad. He's a, he's a great guy and he's going to go far as well with uh, firecracker bullets for sure. Yeah, um, he, he didn't, he doesn't, he, like I said, I'm so low profile. Sometimes you don't even know I'm around. <laughs> I just rack yeah. up the worlds with other people. <laughs> until, until sweetheart dancers or something like that comes out and it just wows everybody. <laughs> Um, but real quick before we move on to uh, Keely and Bailey on what they're doing next, if everybody feels comfortable, uh, feel free because Jeannie Rubin um, from Denver, Colorado um, is looking to do youth programs, um, uh, you know, centered around two-spirit programming and education. So if you guys want to post your emails in the chat so Jeannie oh, can get that. Definitely. That would be yes. wonderful. Um, and just real quickly, I'll, let me chime in here. And if for all of you on Facebook, um, if you don't follow Sean and AD or the Sweethearts page on Instagram, if you would Google us, there's several articles that are literally there to help and inspire and give you that fuel to keep being you. Because that's what this is about right now. That's what this is about is everybody being true to themselves and being visible. Awesome, wonderful, man. Like, and that's, that's what it's all about. You know, once you find out who you truly are, that's when you can shine like a star. That's what, you know, my grandmama always told me, you know, and, uh, but to move on to Keely, uh, any uh, big things coming up in the future out there for you in New Zealand? Um, I'm currently in the process of trying to get another short film made and trying to get some funding to write a feature. But um, more excitingly, I'm currently helping Bailey work on his new short film, which is very exciting. Bailey. <laughs> Tell us about it, Bailey. <laughs> great, work, great work, Keely. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm writing this short film through uh, the Māori Land um, Film Festival just set up a production arm and they've set up a youth incubator program for young filmmakers. And I'm writing a film about um, this thing that happened in the 70s in Auckland in New here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, where Samoan immigrants would move over, they'd be paid to come over to work um, and then, you know, uh, work disappeared. Um, you know, the market crashed and all of that. And so what they started doing was deporting these immigrants by going into their homes in the middle of the night and chucking them in a paddy wagon, sending them on a, on a boat back to Samoa or, or Tonga or wherever it was. Um, so, yeah, so basically that's, um, <laughs> that's what, um, oops, sorry, I got, let's see them. I got distracted, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so basically it's about this thing that happened in the 70s where where people were being deported in the most undignified um, and you know like a legal way um, and it's told through the eyes of children so it's basically about um, 
like Keely touched on, indigenous trauma, the trauma of, of being um, a Pacifica immigrant in New Zealand and, and, and those kinds of things and, and, and how it looks to a child, the very naive kind of perspective of, of just how evil the world can be when you have no concept of, of who, identity and who is, who is good, who is bad or whatever. Well, that sounds like it's going to be an amazing short melee and, you know, to be, you know, well needed as well too. Man, y'all are just making moves out in New Zealand, huh? <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> well, well, keep it up because, you know, Nancy from now on was, you know, a wonderful step, you know, but I'm sure there will be many other steps along your lives' journeys. And, you know, when your short film gets done, Bailey, you know, give us a holler. And I'm sure we'd love to work with you guys again down the road on that here at Vision Maker Media. Um, we did have, yeah, we did have one more quick question though, um, from Tess McCoy. Um, this runs for Keely and Bailey. The the color yellow is used a lot, in Nancy. From now on, does that color mean something specific to you or your culture? Um, well, the color. I'm surprised we even noticed that. I'm kind of like a art nerd, and so culturally. I mean, no, not for me anyway, but I kind of wanted, if you look at the film, you'll see each like segment has a different color. So when um, the character's name is Naru is talking to his father, even though they're quite disconnected and it feels quite like silted, I wanted it to all feel like very warm and yellow. So that's all the yellow colors. When Naru is fighting with his boyfriend and we're at his boyfriend's house, which is quite cold, all the colors are blue, when Naru's performing in his drag show, all the colors are like pink and rainbow. So that's why everything was yellow. I'm surprised you noticed that, to be honest. But really? it's it feel good. Yeah, I mean, it looks one, like it looks great, but I think it, I mean, for me, it felt like um, it goes back to that tenderness and that warmth and that feeling of comfort within this story mm. that some people would feel quite foreign. Oh yeah, it seems like, you know, everything got a little bit more mellow when we saw a little yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that way, yeah. <laughs> All right, for those in the chat, it looks like Ben um, has posted the Instagram links there. And yeah, so um, John and Adrian wanted to say, sorry, they, uh, they lost their connection. They're still on the move there, so they lost their connection. So they wanted to thank you very much for uh, being able to participate. Oh yeah, no problem. And I, I know how it is. And for for everybody tuning in from out on the res, uh, I'm glad you got connection because you know how it is out there sometimes. So yes, it was amazing having them as well, Ben, and and yourself. And um, Ben, do you have any parting words before we jump off today? Yeah, I just wanted to say, hey, that you know, in the, the two years since we made that short, we've never joined in a Q and A together. We've always been, they've on been on the powwow road and I've been out on the film festival circuits and we just doubt. So it's really incredible to be able to have our first session together at Vision Makers uh, inaugural online film fest. And that was really an honor and special to me to be able to share that time with them as well as all of you. Um, and and I'm, uh, I don't know if it's a parting statement, but it is just, uh, you know, I'm very, I'm very, you know, happy to be able to participate and just, so so moved by the film festival you put together and and just the collaborations that are happening because of the work that vision maker media is doing and and i hope to continue uh with you all in the future all of you you know seeing what, what work is coming from it and, um, just you know just watching indigenous cinema become a mainstream thing wonderful and we appreciate the kind words too ben and you know a big shout out to um, Alana Stone, our film festival coordinator, who has been on this chat, putting up the questions, setting everything up, signing the checks. Um, and, you know, a big shout out to, you know, Alyssa Ma as well, who is our social media um, coordinator, um, for, you know, across Instagram and a little bit on Facebook. They and uh, has redesigned our website this year. They particularly have been doing a great job. So big shout out to them. The rest of the Vision Maker Media team, we could, you know, as as I'm sure all of you know, as filmmakers, 
teamwork make the dream work you know so but um before we get off all any parting words today bailey you'd like to leave us with uh uh, yeah, just thank you again to Vision Vision Maker. Um, I'm always grateful for the experience to sort of, I guess, proverbially break bread and, and exchange ideas and stories with other native communities. It's always it's always a, a privilege and an honor to um, even just get a seat at the table and listen in. It, it's it's really cool. So so thank you for that. Um, yeah, yeah, just <laughs> it's exciting. It's all really exciting seeing um, again, like Ben said. I, I actually truly believe that Indigenous cinema will become like a movement in, in terms of, of what we can achieve on the mainstream stage and to just be witness to that is is really really cool so yeah thank you vision maker thank you as well charlie for your awesome moderating keely great to see you again and uh ben it's been an honor thank you well you know i, I appreciate you coming on today bailey and you know we're all indigenous at the end of the day you know there might be some water between us or some invisible lines but we're all indigenous peoples and we can all definitely learn from our own unique cultural takes on, you know, how we grew up and learn from each other. But I guess I'll leave the uh, almost last word because I got to do the sum up with you, Keely. Uh, any parting words today? I'm fairly summed it up. Just a, it's an honor to be here, to be honest. I wish we could have been there in person. As that would have been really nice. But now, maybe next year we'll come over, we'll visit, bring another film, break bread in person. But yeah, thank you for having us. Well, it's, it's really been my honor, and I know we're all honored here at Vision Maker Media to have um, you guys take time out of your busy schedules to sit down with us today. And um, I just want to thank everybody out there watching. Uh, we will have this posted on Facebook and YouTube. Be sure, uh, be sure to share it all across your Instagram and, and uh, Facebook and the old Twitter, the Snapchat and all that good stuff. And be sure to also, if you haven't yet, check out Nancy from now on and Sweetheart Dancers. They're two awesome films, part of our film festival. And if you have checked them out, then go tell three friends to check it out. And have those three friends tell three friends. And then, hey, maybe we'll change the world a little bit for the better. But until then, I'm your host, Miigwish, Charlie Perry, Assistant Director of Vision Maker Media. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for being on the day. And until next time, everybody out there, have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>